Hey, I'm Michael, and today I'm showing you how to use a Glowforge to engrave items that are maybe a little on the uh, on the thicker side. So let's get crafty. Now, first of all, with the Glowforge, all three models, the Glowforge Basic, the Glowforge Plus, and the Glowforge Pro, all three of them come with a crumb tray at the bottom of the machine, which is like this thing right here. Here. Now this crumb tray is basically a metal honeycomb patterned tray that whenever you're cutting out items with your Glowforge, if you have any little small little bits and bobs, they can all fall down inside of this little honeycomb tray for you to actually remove later on. However, this right here is actually an inch and a half tall. And that also takes away from the maximum height of an item that you can put inside of the Glowforge to actually have engraved. So the maximum height overall without this honeycomb tray is two inches. So if you had this honeycomb tray inside of there, you can place something half an inch thick or smaller on top of it to be engraved. So I'm actually gonna show you exactly how to go about this little hack, if you wanna call it that, where you can basically engrave thicker items up to two inches thick. Now to actually get started, we will need a few different items, including a Glowforge, right? Now I am using a Glowforge Pro, a Glowforge Pro is not needed for what we are doing today. It's just the model that I currently have. Now, if you are in the market to get a Glowforge, I have some uh, I have some bad news and I have some good news. The bad news is Glowforge never, ever goes on sale, right? Like ever. However, I do have a referral link that is down in that description box below that will basically give you the best price that you can ever get on a Glowforge ever. Like you can literally save up to $500 on a Glowforge, so it is definitely, definitely worth it. We will also need something to engrave, and I am using this really thick butcher block cutting board right here that we are actually gonna turn into a charcuterie board. Now, I honestly, I fell in love with this. I found this at Home Goods, and I mean, she thick, right? Like, I was thinking that this was probably closer to the two inch mark, but um, believe it or not, this is right at the inch and a half mark. So just imagining that you could actually engrave something that's even half an inch thicker than this right here, it's kind of mind boggling to me at least. I'm so here for it, so freaking obsessed. Now we will also need something to kind of mask this off to help prevent scorching on the board. So for that, I am gonna be using this high tech masking tape, transfer tape. This is from 143 Vinyl. And by the way, if you are a Crafty.net member, you will actually get an everyday 10% off discount to 143vinyl.com in addition to unlimited access to all the Glowforge laser SVG cut files, the SVG cut files for crickets, sublimation files, like fonts, all, all the things. And it also includes a commercial license and it's all like $9.99 per month. So insane. And as far as the 143 vinyl discount, most of our members actually pay for their membership to crafty.net with that discount alone. It's just, it's mind boggling good, y'all. I'm so here for it. Now, speaking of crafty.net, we will also need an awesome SVG cut file. Now, we did recently just release a few charcuterie board SVG cut files. There are more coming in the near future, uh, but I will actually have this listed and linked for you all down in that description box below. So be sure to check that out. But here we are right here on the crafty.net homepage. And I just wanna type in here charcuterie. All right, so here are our files right here. And this is the file that I'm wanting to go with. So let me go ahead and click on this. With this, what I'm gonna do is just come over here and do a one-click download, just like so. And there we go. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and hit back here and start up the Glowforge. And then we'll head over to app.glowforge.com. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and grab that SVG cut file that we just downloaded from crafty.net and go ahead and drag it and drop it over here into the Glowforge app. All right, so here is our SVG file now over here on our, our Glowforge app. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and get my cutting board over here, which will soon be my charcuterie board. I'm gonna get this prepped and ready to be, to be engraved. And so to do that, I am gonna go ahead and just pull off some of this masking tape, transfer tape right here. I'm gonna pull off just a little bit of this masking tape, transfer tape here at the end. Stick this down to our board. You can even grab a little squeegee tool like this and just kind of burnish that down. And you really just want to burnish this down really good to this wood. I mean, go at it like it owes you some money or something, seriously. <laughs> All right, so now before we actually load this into the Glowforge, I am just gonna pull out a little ruler that I did go ahead and print off from the Glowforge 
previously. And what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and line this up just to measure to see how tall this actual cutting board is. All right, so hopefully you can see that it is just barely over that inch and a half mark. So remember, the minimum height that something can be inside of this without the crumb tray is an inch and a half. The max it can be is two inches. So as you can see, I went ahead and just took a little black marker and then just marked between the inch and a half mark and the two inch mark, knowing that basically the height of whatever I put in there has got to be between these two marks without the crumb tray in. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and come back here, remove the crumb tray, I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then I'm also gonna show you basically what you would do if you had something that was on the thinner side that was too thick to go in there on top of the crumb tray, but it was also too thin to go in there just by itself like I am, like I'm doing with this right here. Now, whenever removing the crumb tray from the Glowforge, make sure to lift up the lid and then go ahead and pull down on the front door portion of the Glowforge. You can do this on all three models. It does not matter which model of the Glowforge that you have. Now, whenever it comes time to actually place your item inside of the Glowforge, I try to get mine lined up right into the center as much as possible. And even paying attention to like the outer edges of the Glowforge and making sure that my item is running parallel to it, just to make sure that it is as even and centered as possible. All right, so our cutting board is already loaded into the Glowforge, but I wanted to show you real quick, basically what you could do if you had something that was too thick to go over top of the crumb tray inside of the machine, but also too thin that you couldn't place it inside of the Glowforge by itself. So for this example, here's the, the crumb tray. Again, this is about an inch and a half tall. So we have to keep in mind that with this inside of the machine, the, the tallest material that we can place on top of this is half an inch. Well, this cutting board right here from Ikea is a little over half an inch. Okay, so if I place this in here on top of the crumb tray like so, that is gonna put this height at over two inches, which is just not good. You don't wanna do that with the glow forwards. It's not gonna be able to properly focus in on your material, and it's gonna basically majorly degrade your, your quality of cut or engraving if it even allows you to do it in the first place. So what you could do is actually go ahead and still remove the crumb tray. And you actually could do a, quite a few different things to actually elevate this to be the right height. One of those things being actually grabbing some of these little razors or risers, whatever you want to call them. I actually got this off of Etsy from my friend Ashley over at Chipped Builds. I will have these linked for you all down in that description box below. But basically these are super cool. There's just like these little risers that you can put in here at each corner of this cutting board to raise it to the proper height. All right, so with these little risers now up here underneath this little cutting board, I can then go ahead and measure this again. And with these risers, that puts us at a little over an inch and a half, which is perfect for the Glowforge without the crumb tray. What you could also do is just stack up some scrap wood up here underneath of this cutting board to get it to the right height as well. As long as your ending height is between an inch and a half, into two inches, then you're gonna be good. All right, so now let's take a look over here at our actual Glowforge machine. So as you can see, it has taken a new picture of the inside of the machine. So they could basically go ahead and resize our design accordingly to go on top of our material. In this case, on top of our cutting board. But what I wanna do real quick is actually come up here and click on these three little dots and then click on set focus. And then just basically click somewhere right over here on top of the actual material. And then basically what the Glowforge is doing right now is measuring, it's sending down a little beam down to the actual surface of our cutting board and measuring that distance so that it knows how to properly focus on it and how to actually get the best engraving results. All right, so it has went ahead and updated. Now let me go ahead and just basically grab the little recess handle on this design, drag it outwards like so, maybe something like that. And what I'm also gonna do is come over here to the left-hand side of the page right over here where the little layers panel is. I'm gonna click right here where it says enter settings. And I'm gonna come in here and click on engrave. And then as far as the actual custom or like manual settings, I'm gonna come right over here. And for this particular type of cutting board, I have already ran some test cuts and you always want to run test cuts to make sure that you have the proper cutting or engraving or scoring settings for whatever material that you're actually working with. So with this, for, for me, for what I'm using, it seemed to work out best with 1000 for the speed. 70 for the power, and then 340 for the lines per inch. All right, and I might just make this a little bit bigger. All right, so I think that right there is actually gonna look really good. So let me go ahead and come up here towards the top right-hand corner, click on print, and it's just basically calculating all of the things that's gonna be needed to actually engrave this onto our cutting board. And then it's gonna come back here with the time, and then from there, we can go ahead and hit that little magic go button for to start engraving.
All right, so the charcuterie board is all finished. So all we really need to do now is go ahead and peel off this masking tape transfer tape that was protecting the butcher block cutting board. All right, so as you can see, there's like little bits and bobs here and there and everywhere with like that tape. So what I'm gonna do is actually pull off some duct tape. Now I did get this like Gorilla brand of duct tape. And this stuff is like no joke. Like it really helps out a ton. And I also got like the extra wide version, which makes it just so easy to lay it out onto a surface that you need to get the all the little masking tape, transfer tape, bits and pieces up and off of. Game changer in like my own personal opinion. Like I'm obsessed. <laughs> Hey, real quick, if you are new around here to this channel and you also want to learn how to best use your Glowforge or maybe you're in the market for a Glowforge wanting to learn more about it, then you definitely want to consider stamping that subscribe button and also consider ringing that little bell for all of the notifications because you do not want to miss out on a single Glowforge minute. Also, if you are in the market for one, bad news is Glowforge machines, they never ever go on sale. But the good news is you will never save more money on one than you will with my referral link that is down in that description box below. So be sure to bookmark that for whenever you are ready to purchase it. It also helps this channel at the exact same time. And if you did like this video or if you learned something new, consider hitting that like button and dropping a comment down in the comment section below. Both of those things help me out tremendously here on this channel. It is just so extremely appreciated. Also, it's completely free to do. It takes just a few seconds. Thank y'all so much for watching. I love y'all to the freaking moon and back. And until next time, stay crafty.